So an airline which many people love and carried millions of passengers is Germany's national carrier, Lufthansa. Now the airline has gone through a lot in its history, but it's not always been smooth sailing. In the earlier times, they had to circumnavigate through the economic crisis and also political conflicts, which has influenced the development of the airline. Now as of now, the airline has 283 aircraft in its fleet and flies over 220 destinations, making it one of the largest carriers in the world. But the history of Lufthansa dates all the way back to 1926, when a small airline in Berlin called Deutsche Lufthansa was formed. However, it didn't last too long as an independent company, and very little was left following the defeat of Germany in World War II. Now, the World War had crippled the entire country, but the demand for civil aviation was always there. They saw this as an opportunity to rise and also become a strong independent country known for its engineering marvel and also finesse. So henceforth, in 1955, Deutsche Lufthansa was relaunched with domestic and international services. From the outset, it was designed as a transatlantic carrier, and within a couple of months, the airline was starting to fly to New York using the Lockheed Super Constellation. But what occurred after would indefinitely shape the future of the airline. The East Germany government also created an airline called Lufthansa exactly the same time. However, they lost the rights to the name and started their own airline called Interflug, and it succeeded in stopping all Lufthansa aircraft from flying into West Berlin. Now, even after the fall of East Germany, it was 2001 before Lufthansa started flying to the UK from Berlin, a route which was abandoned within that year, and it was 2010 before the old hub of Berlin could start serious European and long-haul operations. So this carried on for a few years and the airline saw success. So the airline decided to stretch their legs and also develop their route network and cater destinations to America, Africa and the Far East. Now in the 1960s, Lufthansa arrived in the jet age, and they purchased their first Boeing 707. At the same time, they also expanded their long-haul destinations, and they also entered into the cargo sector. But as we know in life, everything that goes up must come down, and the same is for Lufthansa. First, the oil crisis in 1973 and 1979 made the price of fuel explode. At the same time, it created a new understanding of how resources are handled, and it drove the development of fuel-efficient aircraft and also quieter engines. The airline knew they couldn't continue under their current working environment, so they innovated, by purchasing fuel-efficient aircraft and also a major restructuring. They bought their first Queen of the Skies in the 1970s, and it was deployed for the first time on long-haul routes, followed by the Douglas DC-10. Now, from 1976, the Airbus A300, which was the first wide-body twin-engine plane, was also used for medium-distance flights. So the airline was continued to grow and grow, and they were seen as a mass transportation. They redesigned their route network with faster connections and fewer stopovers, and was also one of the first airlines to welcome women in their cockpit. Now, major changes also occurred. In 1995, Lufthansa Technik AG, Lufthansa Cargo and also Lufthansa Systems were all changed into independent companies, and Lufthansa was finally privatised. Now this was meant to increase the group's competitiveness and also contribute to Lufthansa's long-term strategy of developing into a worldwide airline. So after all of this occurred, management decided to change the face of the company, so the entire fleet was given a new livery that pretty much lasts until this day. The Airbus A320s were also ordered to update their fleet, and by 2003, the airline was continuing to expand, opening its new Terminal 2 at Munich. Now, as the saying goes, if you can't beat an airline, then just buy them. So Lufthansa purchased Swiss Airlines in 2005, followed by Austrian Airlines in 2008, and British Midland International in 2009. Although the airlines continue to operate within their own branding, all of their directions come from Lufthansa. They also purchased 19% of JetBlue in 2007. Now, this was the first major investment by a European carrier to buy an American airline since the Open Skies Agreement became effective. The following year, Lufthansa acquired 45% stake in Brussels Airlines and also sponsored them to join Star Alliance. So all in all, the Lufthansa Group is an airline with around 540 subsidiaries and associated companies operating worldwide. They've had a huge influence on the aviation market as we know it today, and although nothing is certain in life, the prospects of Lufthansa dominating the European market looks very likely.